So in this video, we'll talk about some important rheumatologic labs. I will talk more in details when we talk about each disease and how each lab is associated with different diseases. So first, we'll start with the CBC. CBC, two important things we have to check in rheumatologic disease. First is the hemoglobin, which we are looking for anemia of chronic disease. Hemoglobin will be low. Usually, normocytic anemia in 80% of people with anemia of chronic disease. Only 20% will have microcytic anemia. The other one is white count. Obviously, it's going to be elevated because we have an inflammatory response already. Now, the other thing we'll look at is the CMP. And two important components, the creatinine, which can be elevated in different diseases like the SLE and the vasculitis, as we'll mention later. And the other part is the liver function test. Liver function test can help us monitor patients who are taking anti-rheumatologic medications. It also helps us with diagnosing some disease like hepatitis C. Also in sarcoidosis can be differentiated from other rheumatologic diseases by elevation of ALP specifically compared to AST and ALT. Since here we have infiltrative process affecting the biliary tract and duct mainly. Now this is very important in the questions because they usually ask about that and they want you to know about that and how can you differentiate infiltrative processes in the liver compared to non-infiltrative processes. And lastly, let's not forget about hemochromatosis which also causes erythropathy with transaminitis. Let's move on and talk about the inflammatory markers, CRP and ESR. The important thing you need to know about is the timeline. If we have here the x-axis represented by days, <coughs> we can see that the ESR can be elevated in around two days as a peak and go down in five days, while the ESR has a prolonged course and can peak at around 10 days and go down in 20 days. This is important for disease monitoring to differentiate acute on chronic inflammatory process. So one important thing about the ESR, it can be falsely elevated with age. Normally it's less than 20, it can go up to 40 in elderly patients. So always keep this in your mind when you check ESR in this population. Now next we'll talk about the rheumatoid factor, which we know it's an IgM against the FC portion of the IgG. Now it's important to remember that 10% of the population will have rheumatoid factor positive without any disease. And what does it mean if it's positive in rheumatologic diseases? It means that the patient has worse prognosis. Now it can be seen in rheumatoid arthritis, Sjogren's syndrome, it can also be seen in parvovirus infection and cryoglobulinemia. And that means that rheumatoid factor is not specific for any rheumatologic disease. And actually, it's more sensitive in other diseases other than rheumatoid arthritis, like cryoglobulinemia. So let's move on and talk about the antinuclear antibodies. Here is the cell, and we have the nucleus inside, and we have the antibodies attached to the nucleus. Now, the pattern how the antibodies are attached to the nucleus can be differentiated. Sometimes you will read it's pickled, smooth, homogeneous. This is not really associated that much with rheumatologic disease. What you need to know is around 15% of the population, especially the elderly, will have positive ANA without any rheumatologic disease. And the other thing, if someone does the ANA and it came back positive, the patient has only 1% chance to have SLE positive. So ANA can be positive in different diseases, including the SLE, as I mentioned. It's cleroderma can be positive as well, and in rheumatoid arthritis. It's not specific, but it's very sensitive in SLE and scleroderma. Now, what I want you to know is the titer of the ANA. Now, when the ANA is positive in the blood sample, they have to quantitate that by diluting the blood sample into 40 times, 80 times, and moving on, doubling every time. Now, this will be reported as a ratio, starting from 140, and let's here end on 1,320. Now, if the patient is positive, let's say with the ratio of 1,320, it means that they have or they have the antibodies detected after diluting the blood sample 320 times. Anything above 1 over 80, it's considered positive, and this is consistent with an autoimmune process happening in this patient. Last thing I want to talk about is the complement levels. It can be helpful in differentiating different rheumatologic diseases from others. <clears throat> Specifically here, I'm talking about the C4. It can be low in diseases like SLE and the cryoglobulinemia, as well as vision granulomatosis and other diseases. Now, we'll talk about these diseases later on. And we'll talk more about these labs and how we can use them to approach and diagnose different rheumatologic diseases. 
And that's it for the important labs in rheumatology. Hope you guys learned something. See you in the next one.